we have to investigate together into the question of what is the self, the me, the ego, the entity that identifies itself as being separate from another. If you will we are going to go into that to find out whether one can lead a daily life which is not based on you and me, me first and you second. Our whole culture is that, social, moral, ethical, religious and so on. Right? Can we go on with it? What is the self, the me, the ego, how does it arise? What is its inmost nature of the self? Inmost, the very depth of it. Is that very structure, the nature of the self, fragmentary? Or is there in the very structure, in the very essence of it, a quality which is not fragmentary? You are following all this. I ask because, please sirs, I ask because I am not sure we are meeting each other. Please, sir, I am not sure we are communicating with each other. I rather doubt that we are, because it is a very serious thing that we are investigating. Because man has always lived with sorrow, and acquainted with grief, whether it is possible to end that sorrow, not in some distant future but in our daily actual life now, and also to find out, not intellectually or verbally, or emotionally and romantically, the nature and the beauty of love, what is the depth of it, the meaning of it, the fullness of it, and also what is death. So it is very important, it seems to me, that we examine together, share together, walk together, investigate together, this question, which is, what is the nature of the self, the identity of a particular individual opposed to the community, opposed to the many, and what is the inmost nature of the self? Without speculating, without asserting, without accepting the traditional verbiage. I am using the word verbiage, it is just words. So we are together, please bear in mind, we are together exploring. So you are not just sitting there listening to the speaker but actually working with him. That means you will have to give your attention. You have to listen to each other. Though all of you can't speak and I am the only person that unfortunately speaks at the moment. We have to be very alert, watchful. Heeding that which is being said and our response to what is being said and how we receive or accept, or listen to what is being said. All this is the responsibility of those of you who are willing to listen seriously. May we go on. If the self, the me, is put together by thought then whatever it does at the highest so-called conscious, or super-conscious level, is still fragmentary, right? If it is not put together by thought, the me, the ego, the self, then it is something sacred, inviolable, unalterable, something that is beyond time. So we are questioning these two factors, whether it is put there, the nature and the structure of the me, the ego, the self, by thought and therefore fragmentary, and whatever it does, however it might imagine, long for, hypnotize itself that it is the whole, that it can perceive the whole. It can come upon truth, either that is a total illusion and deception, and if the self, the me, the ego, the you, is something that is not of time, that is not born of thought, then it is capable of perceiving totally the nature of truth, that which is beyond words which is not measurable by words. So these two are factors we must examine, right? So we are trying to find out the inmost nature of the self because all our activity is based on self, the me first and you second, in all our relationships, in all our bureaucratic activities, social activities, in our relationship with each other, the self, the self-centered activity is constantly in operation, even when we are meditating, even when we are supposed to be religious and all the rest of it, right? So what is the self? Unfortunately, most of you probably have read philosophy, sacred books, I won't call them sacred because they are just books, or somebody has told you, your guru, or your religious leader probably has told you the self is something extraordinary, it is to live everlastingly from the beginning to the end. So we are asking a very simple question, which is really tremendously complex. How you approach that question matters a great deal. Whether you approach it with fear, you approach it with a conclusion, or accepting the authority of others, and your approach then is already limited, circumscribed. To investigate one must be free otherwise you can't investigate. Right? If you are prejudiced, if you have some ideals, some conclusions, some wish, then that very wish, conclusion is going to dictate your investigation. So can you, if I may ask, be free to go into this matter very carefully, logically, sanely, and freely to find out the nature of the self, and the inmost essence of the self, because if the self is merely the operation of thought, put together from the very beginning of time then death has a certain meaning. If it is not, then death is a beginning. We will go into it. The individual, the identity of a human being who feels or thinks he is separate, is he actually separate though his form, name, may be different, his idiosyncrasies, his character, his peculiar, if I may use the word without being misunderstood, genius, peculiar genius, not in the great sense of the word genius, peculiar eccentricities, tendencies, qualities, are they the result of culture, the culture in which you are born, the development of character, the resistance to the culture, which may be the idiosyncratic outlook on life. 
This is very, very important for us, if I may point out over again, to go into. So first, what are you? Your activity is based on the self, self-centered activity from morning until night. So what is that center from which you are acting? The center from which you are meditating. If you meditate, I hope you don't, that center from which all your fears, all your anxieties, sorrows, griefs, pain, affections, arise. That center from which you are seeking happiness, enlightenment, God, or truth, or whatever you like. The center from which you say, I take a vow to be a monk. The center from which, if you are in business, trying to become more and more and more powerful, more money. That is the center which we are examining, the self. What is that self and how has it come into being? That is, to know yourself. You understand. That is, knowing yourself is actually what you are, not what you think you are, what you hope to be. But the self and the knowing of that self, whether it is possible to know it completely, the essence of it. And whether it is possible to go beyond all the fragmented activity of the self. Right? So is the self that center put together by thought. Please think, investigate, reason as though for the first time you are thinking about it. Then it is fresh, then you can investigate. But if you say, I already know what the self is, I already have come to certain conclusions about it, you will prevent yourself from examining it. Right? That's fairly simple. So what is the self? You, what are you? Not, who you are, but actually what are you? There is a difference between who you are and what you are. I don't know if you see semantically the meaning of the two. The one, when you say who you are, you are investigating somebody leading further and further away from the center. But if you say what you actually are, what is, then you are dealing with actuality. The actuality is that which is actually happening, right? You will see it in a minute. So what are you? You are a name, right? A form, the result of a society, a culture which has emphasized throughout the ages that you are separate, something indefinitely identifiable, right? You have your character, your peculiar tendency, your character, either aggressive or yielding. Is that not put together by the culture which has been brought about by thought? It is very difficult for people to accept a very simple, logical examination, because they would like to think the self is something most extraordinary. We are pointing out the self is nothing but words and memories. So the self is the past, and to know oneself means to observe yourself, actually what you are, in our relationship with each other. Then the reactions of the self come out, right, in our relationship, intimate or not intimate. Then you begin to see what you are, your reactions, your prejudices, your conclusions, your ideals, your this and that, all that, is not all that a result, right? Are you following? That which is a result has a cause. So is a cause a series of memories, remembrances, and so a center that has been created by thought to which thought clings. Am I off by myself? Let's begin differently. Don't you want to know about yourself? If you don't know about yourself, actually what you are, you have no basis for any action which will be true, not fragmentary, not miserable, regretting, and so on. Don't you want to know what you are? No, to know yourself. Now how do you begin to find out about yourself? You can only know yourself either through observation in relationship, or through analysis. Right? Are you following this? Oh, come on. I can know myself. I will talk about myself. I can know myself watching my relationship with others, with my wife, if I am married, or with my girlfriend, or with friends. In that observation I see myself reacting, as a Hindu, as a Buddhist, as a Christian, as a non-Christian, or imagine that I love people, you know, I find out or through analysis, right, analyzing myself. Now to me analysis is paralysis, and the Hindus are very good at it, and therefore they are totally paralyzed because they don't act. They analyze, 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 therefore gradually this analysis leads them to paralysis. You watch them as they walk down the street. So either you analyze, or you observe in relationship. Observe yourself, what you are, how you think, how you react, what are your responses, what is the center from which you are moving. Always a fixed point and from there move. Therefore the movement is very limited. So we are going to find out, in the process of analysis who is the analyzer. You understand my question. The analyzer thinks he is different from that which he is analyzing. But is that so? The therapeutic analysis by a professional, you understand what I am talking about, do you? All right. Probably they have never questioned this. Who is the analyzer? Is the analyzer different from the analyzed? You understand. Am I different from my anger, from my greed, from my anxiety, from my ugliness, brutality, cruelty, hate? Am I different from that? If that is different from me then I can analyze it. Right? In each analysis, if I am good at it, each analysis must be complete otherwise the remembrance of that analysis is going to interfere with the next analysis. Is this all Greek to you? I'll go on, it doesn't matter. I am afraid you are used to listening, not investigating. So is the analyzer different from the analyzed? Or they are both the same, the analyzer is the analyzed. Right, 